Transporter technology is mental and it murders you every time you use it. Welcome to the Tac Impulse Podcast. Our tachyon pulse has been unable to completely penetrate the anomaly. So, transporter technology is used in lots of science fiction. I am going to focus on Star Trek, even though it's in Stargate, etc. as well, mainly because there's been several accidents over the many years of Star Trek that give us some insights into how the technology actually would work and why I say it murders you every time you use it. The basic principle for transporter technology seems to be the same regardless of science fiction or what science fiction is you're watching. You'll basically have matter that turns into energy, is transported to a place, and then that energy is then reintegrated back into matter. There are basically two ways, though, that you could do that. So you could either scan an object, or a person in this case, track where every single atom is, take all of those atoms apart, move them in a beam of energy to another place, and then put those atoms back together again. That is one way. And in that case, the matter is reintegrated, but it's still your matter. You are actually very empty as a being. There's lots and lots of atoms weaved together and it makes sort of mass. The science don't really understand why we get solid, but we do. So it is possible that all those atoms are taken apart, moved, and then put back together again. Or the transporter scans you, maps you out, disintegrates the matter one end, and then copies you on the other end with fresh matter, basically, fresh atomic structure. But it puts all of those atoms back in exactly the same order from the point that you left. Now, if that's the case, you are being disintegrated and photocopied. Okay? So in that case, I would argue you are killed and reborn every single time you use a transporter. Now, philosophy majors will have a field day with this. But why do I say I think that is the reality? And I think there have been a couple of incidents that prove me to be correct. Well, let's start with, say, Kirk. There was a transporter accident and um, we got the yin-yang Kirk. There was um, a weird orb of energy and it, um, some, it did something to the transporters and there were two Kirks energised. One was evil. He didn't have a little moustache, so weird. And the other one was all good. It separated the positive and the negative parts of Kirk into two separate beings. Now, if the transporter is only capable of tagging specific atoms and then basically moving them and reintegrating them, where did all of that extra matter come from to create two Kirks? You see my point? Again, Tom Riker. There was an incident when Riker was a little younger, before his days of the Enterprise. He was on a planet. There was a problem transporting his away team back. They couldn't get hold of Riker's signal, so they sent a second signal down to um, scan his thing, to bring him back up. So there was two transporter signals. One got back to the ship. The other bounced off this weird energy anomaly that was causing the problem, and he was reintegrated back onto the surface. Side note, there's going to be a couple of side notes in this. Side note, how does the energy convert back into matter on the ground where there isn't a transporter pad? When there isn't that technology to actually put it all back together again? Either of the two scenarios, whether it is matter that is tagged and the at atoms are literally taken apart and put back together again, how are they put back together again on the surface? Or, if it's my thing and if it's just a copy on the surface, how does that happen? What is the physical process that's happening that allows them to go back together again? I, I, I've never understood it. And if it's not necessary, why do you need a transporter pad? Occasionally they'll say you have to have a transporter pad within, like, within the ship transporting because it's like too close and it's like you need the transporter pad to be like, more accurate. We got two Rikers. There's been an argument over the years on which Riker is the real Riker. I would argue neither, because 
the original Nyka was disintegrated on the surface and basically two copies were created from two different beams. But even if that's not, and the first situation is right, whereas there is a real Riker and the transporter created a copy because of the second beam, why is the transporter capable of creating copies? It doesn't make any sense. Where does the atoms from that come from? Unless the transporter is capable of actually doing both things. So it can create a copy if it needs to, or it doesn't when it doesn't need to. That doesn't make any sense. So, the Riker thing, I think, adds a little bit more evidence to the idea that you are disintegrated and replicated, basically. Replicated technology is something we know they can do. So, your being is replicated. We've got the fact that, actually, you can be stored within a transporter for decades, given enough power and enough memory. That, again, suggests to me that it's not actually the atoms that are physically being held, it's just the information. Now we saw Montgomery Scott do this with the Dyson Sphere incident, and we see this on Strange New Worlds with the Doctor and his daughter who is trying to keep alive. Her illness is progressing, so he keeps her in the transporter buffer so that she can basically be held in suspended animation while he tries to figure out how to save her life. It's just to me that that is information that is being held. Another example of why I think it's information rather than matter that's being transported is that the motion picture and a couple of other incidents to be found in Star Trek, we've seen power problems or outside influences affecting the transporter signal. And I remember Scott actually saying, we can't get enough power, we can't get the signal, we're losing the clarity of the information, the signal, or whatever. And then when that has happened, they've tried to reintegrate them, they've been screaming in pain, and then, you know, the transportation, the beam has gone back down to the source, and those people were basically mulch. That thinks of me like when I send an email and the data is corrupted and it comes out all gobbledygook. That's not atomic structure being tagged and moved. That is data being damaged and then obviously not being able to put it back together again. Another example of that. Enterprise had the sexy shower scene with all that blue goop. The reason they did that was to make sure that pathogens, etc. weren't transported from the surface to the ship. So nobody was getting any viruses or anything like that. And... You basically, at first on Enterprise, had to basically stay in stasis for a little while till you could go back onto the ship. Transporter technology meant they no longer had to do that because the transporter actually filters out any pathogens. We've also seen it being able to deactivate weapons or remove weapons, which then suggests, again, that it's data, not specific atoms. It can read the data, knows that some of it isn't quite right, and remove it. We also know, thanks to Picard Season 3, that stuff can be put in because the Borg used our transporter technology against us and basically we got half of anybody under the age of 25 replicated. So, again, it can put stuff in, which is terrifying. The Tuvix incident. Is, was Tuvix murdered aboard Voyager by Janeway? He says so. So what happened? Again, if you forget... Tuvok and Neelix were on a transporter pad and they were coming up. They had an orchid that had some weird enzyme that caused hybrids and they ended up merging and becoming a hybrid entity. So, again, if it was that all of the atoms were tagged and brought back, where did all of those atoms go? Because they just disappeared otherwise because we had two creatures turned into one. So there's an awful lot of matter there that went sideways, if that's the way it happens. If it's information, the transporter got confused and just merged them. The amount of actual matter on the ground doesn't matter. <laughs> now, Janeway then said they figured out a way to separate them. Regardless of how the transporters do it, the whether it's one way or the other, they should have been able to be Tuvix separate out the coding for both or the matter and then create Neelix and Tuvok again 
but also keep Tuvix. But they didn't because it made an interesting moral dilemma for the story. But either way, they created or refound a bunch of matter again anyway, because they went from one to two beings again. So again, the transporters replicated matter from somewhere. So, the replicators can form matter. That is just grabbing atoms, putting them together in the right way. You create a nice cup of Earl Grey. They can disintegrate matter, to be fair, you throw enough energy into object, we can do that today. The transporters, I think, disintegrate you and then copy you. So this is the big question. If you knew that, would you care? I can't help but wonder that humanity is actually very good at ignoring things like this if it's convenient for them. And transporters would be incredibly convenient. If somebody actually explained to a child how this technology worked and that it does disintegrate you and then basically copy you, they would freak out and refuse to ever get bored a transporter. You could also argue though that does it matter? We shed the cells in our body all the time anyway. Your, the cells in your body will be completely different. I think it's every seven years or so. Um, somebody in the comments will correct me, I'm sure. But I think it's something like that. That from a cell point of view, you're a new being every seven years or so. The transporters just do it quicker. If it puts that matter back in exactly the same order, does it actually mean you are a different person? As long as from your perspective, you're not. I'm not sure. We do lots of things in our world today because of convenience it actually does us harm and is the whole thing i'm talking about quite scary in some ways but actually irrelevant because as a species we just ignore that stuff when it makes our life easier or we'd like it i actually think that is the case and i actually think people will just ignore it but what do you think get into the comments if this technology, either way, tears you apart and puts you back together again, or disintegrates you and copies you, would you use it? Or would you, you know, sit in a shuttlecraft for a couple of hours instead? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I genuinely am not sure. But, hey, this technology is actually being worked on by researchers. And they every so often they have, like, breakthroughs in how they might actually be able to transport objects so this might actually be a dilemma we need to actually think about at some point in the future. Probably not in our lifetime, so. So, yeah, transporters, mental. What other technology in Star Trek and other sci-fis do you actually also consider to be mental? And would you like me to talk about? Get in the comments and tell me. I'm gonna do the holodex at some point because that technology is insane and i know what men would do with that technology if we had it and you do too and it's disgusting but i'll talk about that in another video any other technology you want me to discuss let me know if you are new to the channel don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell notification it really helps us out and you'll never miss any of our new videos also you can become a member of the channel and you know see videos up to 24 hours before everybody else which is quite nice so go check that out as always, please stay safe, live long and prosper, don't get beamed anywhere, it will kill you, and I'll see you next time. Our tachyon pulse has been unable to completely penetrate the anomaly. 